Stephen, I'm going to give you this next question. You're going to say, Terry, what are you trying to get me in trouble? I'm going to ask it anyway, and because I've answered this. We have the Pope who we pray for every day, Pope Francis. He's our legitimate Pope. But he says that the most influential person in his life was a communist and atheist woman in college. And so I think that that says a lot about where he's at. What advice would you give our Holy Father, you know, if you had a 30-minute conversation with him about uh, the situation in China and of the world and what communism is about? What would you share with him? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't <laughs> think I have anything to say to him that he doesn't already know. I'd say that the, the, the battle, you know, for, for salvation is fought one soul at a time. It's not, fought, it's not fought over societies. It's not fought over groups of people. It is a battle uh, to win souls. And the battle begins with encouraging people to be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. It continues through discouraging abortion. It continues through uh, encouraging lifelong faithful marriages uh, that are, um, you know, that 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 result in lots of children and hopefully grandchildren. Um, and and uh, you know that's where the battle is. The battle is not one of 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 remodeling society into some kind of earthly paradise because that's out of our reach. Mm -hmm. We can only save souls. And so the work of evangelization, the work of proselytization has to go on ceaselessly. And as we as we become Catholics, as we go down the road to becoming hopefully um, sanctified and, and ready for God's presence in heaven, yeah. we, we naturally do charitable work in, in the process of doing that. But the charitable work is done as an example of Christian living and Christian love. Mm -hmm. It's not done with the idea that we can create heaven on earth. Amen. Because we, yeah. the one section that I had to refrain from writing that, that I was very tempted to was to draw parallels between what's happening in China as they go down once again down the communist road to ruin yes. and what's happening in the, in the United States. Oh, because big time. There are parallels here. Yes. There are parallels here. There are lots of young people who because of their unfamiliarity with socialism and communism, right. ad admire certain aspects of it. And there are also some very wealthy people like uh, like uh, Warren Buffett's uh, now deceased business partner, uh, who said that uh, he admired certain aspects of the communist system. What do these very uneducated young people and these very, very wealthy uh, multi-billionaires have in common? Well, they, 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 they like the idea of a system that that gives them gives them control over the people and and gives them whatever they want in terms of uh, supposedly free services from the government, without realizing that uh, the the billionaires, of course, think that they will never be brought under control because their wealth will exempt them from the controls that socialism impo imposes on everyone else. And the young people simply think that free stuff comes without a cost, and it's never. <laughs> you your freedom so there were lots of there were lots of things i could have talked about how uh, about how china is going down the socialist road to ruin and we seem to be going down that same road yes and uh, I, there's some question in my mind about who gets there first yeah. yeah excellent point i agree totally on that jess what's another question steve who lost china to communism and yeah. why was china so susceptible to a communist takeover in the first place great question yeah, well, there was been a, there have been a lot of lies told about about who lost China, and there have been a lot a lot of lies told about the Chinese Communist Party, which uh, the the members of the State Department who were in China at times said, no, these people, these communists, really aren't communists. They're just agrarian reformers. They want to carry out a land reform. Uh, they're really Democrats at heart. You know, they're not <laughs> so bad. Okay. The Soviet Union under Stalin knew that wasn't true. That's why from the 30s on, he was sending men uh, and equipment and money every month to Mao in Yan'an in his northern base to build up that red base. And then at the end of World War II, just before Japan surrendered, what did Stalin do? He sent in the Russian army into Manchuria to take over the million men, except the surrender of the million men under the Japanese Imperial Army who were in Manchuria. All of those weapons, those howitzers, the gunboats, the planes, everything that armed those that million man Japanese Imperial Army was turned over to the Chinese communists 
along with Russian military instructors and Japanese military instructors who built them up into a formidable military force. Wow. Chiang Kai-shek, without that intervention from Russia, would have crushed would have crushed the communist. Uh, China would have then experienced life under a system, the nationalist system, whose constitution is actually modeled on the constitution of the United States. Wow. Under Chiang Kai-shek, who was a Christian, he became a Christian when he married Song Mei Ling. I've read his diaries. He quotes scripture in his diaries. You know, in your diary, you're talking to yourself, right? Yeah. So he wasn't trying to trying to put on airs or pretend that he was something he wasn't. He was a, a committed Christian. And all of that was lost. Why? Because while the Russians, the Soviets, were arming the communist Red Army of Chairman Mao, we sent General Marshall to tell the nationalists in Chiang Kai-shek that they wouldn't get any more aid from the United States unless they negotiated with the communists and reached a kind of settlement with them to set up a united government. Wow. You can't negotiate with these power-hungry megalomaniacs. Yes. Mao would never have consented to any sort of, of joint rule, but he used that period of time to train his army, and then he rolled over southern China. So who lost China? Well, the Soviet Union helped Mao. We didn't help Chiang Kai-shek. So uh, that's, that's, that's why the Chinese people have been languishing under three quarters of a century of communism. Wow. And it, hundreds of millions of people have died. Yep, good advice. Steve, Jeff. Steve you, you wrote a PhD thesis. Did, did you write it on communism? And I think you had mentioned a while back ago that uh, it wasn't uh, – it wasn't accepted. Is that you mean at Stanford when your degree was held up? You yeah, about tell, that? tell us a little yeah, bit about the late seventies. Right. Oh yeah. All right. So the, the you know I I was the first American social scientist on the ground in China. Mm -hmm. I found that unlike uh, many of my Stanford professors who believed that 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 Chairman Mao had done a wonderful thing in creating a new new China, I found that the people in China were not at all happy under communist rule that they call the Chinese Communist Party the big landlord because it had taken all the land away from them and made them work in huge people's communes, not for themselves, but but for the state, for the Communist Party. Uh, I found that that many people had been executed, others had been tortured. Uh, after the Great Leap Forward, the Cultural Revolution, I was there with the one child policy began. I was in the operating room when women who were eight, nine months pregnant were forcibly oh. aborted. That's when my conversion began. I saw that's when I realized that evil existed because oh, yeah. here was the killing of a tiny son of Adam, a tiny daughter of Eve who'd done nothing to deserve the death sentence. Yeah. They were innocents, and yet a death sentence had been issued and carried out in their case. Uh, that was a great evil. And if such a great evil can exist, there must be, you see, I thought to myself, even in my ignorance, I thought to myself, there must be a compensating good if such a great evil can exist to keep the universe in balance because otherwise, the universe is mad. If such a great evil can exist and without a compensating good, then the universe is mad. I didn't want to live in an insane asylum. And so I began to seek the good. And if you seek the good, you will you will find God because he's the source of all goodness. Amen. So I wrote my, my doctoral dissertation on my year-long field work in China, recounting all of these things. Well, Stanford didn't want to read it. No. And they and they asked me to go away. So I was fired wow. from Stanford. What does it profit a man to gain his PhD and lose his mortal <laughs> Thank you. Hey, the yeah. Stephen Mosier, thank you for your fidelity to Jesus Christ. Thank you again. And your uh, your book is called The Devil and the Communist China. You can get it from Vir Virgin Most Powerful Radio's website. Click on the Tan Book Connection. Stephen, may God richly bless you and all the work you're doing.